Welcome back. And I want to continue to talk about ways that we can create a better classroom. In the second part, I want to focus on the importance of bringing in culture and being able to create a space where you have a platform to talk about the outside world and bring that in. And I call that my pride curriculum. Going back to those extremely difficult two years, I began to take note of all of the things that would happen throughout the year. That I felt students would go block by block by block and no person will ever give voice to. And I also made a list of things that I wish students had as a part of their lives or at least been exposed to that I don't feel that they did. In one of my education programs that I help run, we have a part where we talk about culture. So I went into the school year wondering, how do I put that into my class? One word of caution and a big push I want to give voice to is in some PDs, we as educators talk a lot about culturally responsive teaching. But I don't think we spend enough time thinking about what that means in practice. Students really do appreciate the opportunity to confront real-world topics and ideas. I talk a lot in my class about mental health, and I won't ever forget at the end of September when a student who the previous year was dealing with coming back, being in and out of class after a difficult time with the previous year, he let me know that September is actually Suicide Prevention Month and that he thinks that my class might have saved his life. That alone is a reason to consider putting this in. Yes, you learn a lot about current events. There's always the video in the beginning of class. I didn't even know they had a teacher appreciation week. That's a thing. We watched lots of videos. Um, you learn about like important people like LeVar Burton. I enjoyed those videos. Um, Memorial Day or Veterans Day, whatever it was, like the military. You learn about like racial things, cultural things. We watched uh, Men of Honor. We watched the beginning of that, the Asian movie. Um, when Ming Na Wen. Yes, we, we, you learn a lot of interesting things in this class. We can talk about, any, about anything that's happening right now, like any big topic, like the recent like abortion, Alabama and everything. Like we'll we, we legit like talk half the class about that. So it was like cetera, but I still can't remember right now. Yeah, I know like once in a while we'll watch about, we'll just have a video pop up about something that's going on um, so we can be aware of just the, what the world we're living in and Ms. Dunsmith is make sure that we're aware of that. Make your students interested in the class, even if it's not a very interesting topic. Mm. Like, trying your best to make the class engaged, even if it's, like, super boring. Mm. Like, I've had teachers that have, that, you know, they're teaching some boring stuff, mm -hmm. but them as, like, a teacher, their ability to kind of make the class environment better. One of the biggest pushbacks that I get in terms of why it can't be more consistent or why teachers can't even consider putting this into your class is that we feel that in a 60 minute or however much time that we don't have enough time. I used to feel that way too until one time I hastily forgot to put together a do now and instead decided to play an introductory video. It went so well that one day went to two and so on and so on. And what I found is I actually have a lot of time available to me. And what it really came down to is efficiency and my own willingness to do it. One of the problems I have with the workshop model is spending that first five to ten minutes on a do now. Is that what it really comes down to is really just management. A check on how do I manage my students. It created confrontational moments of rearing students who weren't on task, while also creating guilt for those who came late. What I also found when looking at the quality of engagement, I found that the quality of engagement wasn't consistently there either. With the pride curriculum model, it allows students to transition into your academic setting, while also exposing them to new topics and new things to be aware of. Will some students abuse the structure and end up coming late? Yes, but now I've minimized the number of things students have to do and made this moment more simple in terms of management. I also found that during the first five minutes as teachers, we have a lot of things that we have to do. Attendance, 
checking materials, getting my presentation working, that one random student that wants to come up to you and ask you questions before class. Now, I have five whole minutes to do that in. And students aren't just watching me fiddle around. I think we are communicating something about control and how prepared we are during this moment too. I also think that my favorite thing about the Pride curriculum is that it allows you to talk about things that you genuinely care about. Is it climate change? World hunger? Black Lives Matter? LGBTQ issues? You get to share things that you, the teacher, has pride in. But don't just show videos. Put as much into your pride curriculum as you do your own content. Like if you're coming like from class to class, it can be overwhelming. So yeah. if you think about like, like you have like a couple minutes to talk about something different, it like broadens, it like opens your like thinking. Like you put up videos about like um like the teacher of uh, appreciation week, and you saw like the different perspectives of teachers. It's like it opens your, I don't know, I don't know how, if I'm saying it right, like broadens your perspective, I guess, when you show different videos and then go into the classroom. Well, it kind of like eases your way in. It's just like most of the videos you show like before class, it just opens people's eyes to like different issues. The, the girl that had the multiple personality disorder, yeah. you showed it in here and then you showed it in class as well. Like kids are talking about that outside of class. Like, they thought that was very eye-opening that someone actually had that. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's, you, kids do learn something to, from, like, from those videos. Like, they, it makes them aware of stuff that happened in this world. If they get, like, I mean, like, some of it translates into the content, like, some teachers you come in, and, like, they'll give you, like, a packet from, like, the same book, and then, like, you do that packet, and then you're on to the next section, give you another packet, you do the packet, and like, I feel like if they cared more, they'd want to put some of their own voice into it. And it's not just catering around holidays, but also around amazing moments that you've had in your life. I'm a big believer in quotes, having the ability to be empowering. I also have a large group of amazing people who have inspired me to do things or provide me with life lessons. Why do we not introduce students to these moments or these phrases? I do a quote thing, where every person I present, I share a quote from them. It literally just takes a Google search to find and bring into these moments. This is an example of a Denzel Washington quote from an acceptance speech he gave three years ago. You'd be surprised the cool discussions that can come from this. There are links to any of the clips in the note tab of this presentation. I also think about when notable people pass away or important people achieve milestones. I told students when Stanley died how important he was to my development. That when I was in the fourth grade, I couldn't read a single thing. But my brother would steal comic books and we would read them together. And somehow by the end of the fourth grade, I was reading at an eighth grade level. I think about people like Malala who was willing to die for the opportunity just to get an education. Use these inspirational people to build around them a model of what they're supposed to do. If I'm a student walking in the halls, not taking away the reason that students might be doing so, and there exists a girl who had to fight for her opportunity, it might give me a reason to stay. When I hear students talk about and or encourage others to stay in their classes, we can consider that a win. Like him talking about like stuff going on and like stuff that we want to like talk about and he asks you questions like what did you guys do this weekend and all this and really engage with you. Uh, maybe that's because he's such a good teacher, he can literally fit everything in 30 minutes so like that's hard to do, he's a really good teacher mm -hmm. like that and he still gets all the content done. Um, but. Yeah, he goes like that, Miss Nina does the same thing, like, she won't do that type of thing, but, like, she'll just stop teaching for a little bit, and she'll just, like, ask, like, where do I get the best, like, couch? I'm trying to get a couch, like, where do I get the best couch? Like, just talking, talking with your class, and not just being all about the work all the time, yeah. that's kind of important. However, you can base it around holidays, and in America, we have a lot, but broaden it out even further. 
and use these holidays to talk about other things. Around Martin Luther King Day, I like to talk about Nichelle Nichols, who is an actress who had the first important non-traditional role on television. She tells the story of how she wanted to quit Star Trek, but Martin Luther King said she couldn't do that. But I also feel like you really connect Ken to the real world. You know, lots of you don't do that, and that makes students more engaged and like, interested. Like, I know math. Like, a lot of the times we're learning stuff that we're never going to see again. And our teacher doesn't really apply it to the real world, real world, so we don't really care. And you, I feel like that's a major Yeah, you show us, like, the videos. Do you remember when we were talking about, um, what was it, like, the surface tension and stuff like that? You showed us videos of the Dead Sea, and um, there was one time that, like, oxygen video. Uh, yeah, you just, you do that kind of thing, and I think that helps a lot with keeping students engaged. Mm -hmm. And it allows you to really integrate videos and culture into your classroom so that when you show videos or have discussions about culture, it doesn't sound foreign because it's genuinely part of your overall class experience. But it can't be random. You have to want to find these places and then plan for them. Wouldn't you rather just kind of say have a good conversation with some people? Hmm. At some point, like, it feels like he genuinely kind of feeds into it. It's kind of fun. So, like, I, they want to, and it's also planned. However, what I find during these moments where we have culturally responsive PD, teachers try to implement them. But I think the reason it doesn't feel as effective is because of the fact that we don't do them as frequently as we need to. It can't just happen once. It needs to be a part of your overall class structure. If you believe the principles of constant gardening or have ever heard of the psychology of cleaning clean windows, then that applies here. But with it, you'll be creating a truly dynamic classroom where you have the ability to do whatever you want about anything that you want, and it doesn't seem out of place. Most videos are five minutes or so, so it also helps you fill in the gaps in your lesson plan for that day when you had that extra 10 minutes that you didn't account for. Even though it seems random, it also provides students with some kind of structure. Some students come into my class expecting, sometimes even demanding, that they have a video. More importantly, what I found is that students who participated in discussion contributed more during instruction, that the real barrier is whether or not your class is a safe space, that a student's lack of participating or sharing has more to do with trust than a lack of knowledge. The reason why I enjoy this class is because I never had a class like this. Um, I like this is my favorite class out of all my classes. And I'm just saying I just say it because honestly like I always I always say like how there's like no teacher that I've had that's been consistently like telling you how important your education is and letting you choose if you really want to care about your education. But that's what I have to say about that. My, like I have a teacher that does this and like when they get in, when they're like in a good mood that day, they'll come in and they'll like they have a lot of interesting stuff to say, and a lot of real world examples, videos to show. And then other days, they just throw a packet, and they, she just kind of lets us do our stuff. And like, you know, I, I can respect having like a rough day, but like students have a rough day, and if we have a rough day, and we're not doing our work, we get in trouble. Mm -hmm. If a teacher has a rough day, if they come in, they just throw us work, they're, they're fine. I want to emphasize again just how empowering it is to give students someone that they can talk to about real world things and the importance of creating that space for them. So much of growth involves around modeling and finding people who resonate with them. Imagine if every teacher tried to make this a point. I remember back to my own time when I would walk door to door to door hoping to find someone that either looked like me or resonated with me culturally. Unfortunately, for students of color, sometimes it's difficult for them to find those people. But imagine if every teacher tried to make this a point. Would we be able to connect with everyone? No, 
But what will come of it is a space where every student will have at least one person. Attached or in the description is a sample of how I use it in my class to help encourage participation through the Ask Mr. Douglas Maybe, section. Uh, well, see, that's kind of another part of the problem. I feel like we, like we don't really know why. Like, it's just like, like the reason why like, like when, te when teachers do do that, like when they do talk to you about stuff that they care about, like Mr. Cohen talks about like the Red Sox all the time, like you feel like you're part of their life now, and you know, he grows a good connection with these students that he always had. And then like some teachers like just don't, it feels like they don't care to connect with you, and more just like, all right, I'm gonna teach you this, and then you're gonna leave. And also, it allows me to highlight important parts of my personal life. Like when my sister got a full ride to Gonzaga. It's a human connection, but I think there's a lot of lessons in that too. I know teachers do a good job, like in the beginning of the year, like they say like, oh, I'm this, I like this, and I do this. But then sometimes they won't like go back to it. Like, like uh, for example, like, like you talked about like your time like in like Seattle, then like you still do this. Like this is like you get to talk about like your own, like like, like you still talk about throughout the year. Some teachers don't do that. Some teachers like they'll tell you like one thing about them once, and then like the rest of the year is just off curriculum. And it also gives you a platform to bring in things that are outside of your content. One thing that I found is that sometimes there are these moments where for testing reasons or some kind of event, my class time is shortened or half of my class is missing somehow. <laughs> Students used to tell me that they're not doing anything in their classes when really that time can be used for culture. I like to do a journal prompt activity when this occurs and in CPT, it's sometimes discussed about collaborating with our content. I have students in a senior homeroom I took over who don't envision their lives or their futures. While what? college may not be the answer for everyone, every person can benefit from an exploration into careers. I do a career clusters activity throughout the year that hopefully helps lead students down that path. Wouldn't it be cool if a guidance counselor came in and led that discussion? I think I also enjoyed, um, like, before the breaks, when we would, like, do the round tables and, like, talk. That was really fun. Um, we were part of this class. It was just everything, the space, um, the diversity, and how everybody in this class can talk to each other, giving us our own opinion, our voice, like, to create a voice for each other. It also allows me to touch on things or habits that I wish students had. For instance, one thing that I feel students don't do, or really people don't do in general, is read. And so I do a thing around LeVar Burton and how Reading Rainbow is a show that got me into reading. I remember me and my brother trying to guess what books would be in the next episode and checking those out in the library. And then I would see him in things like Roots or Star Trek, and all of this cultural exposure allows me to introduce extra credit opportunities that are grounded in something. Extra credit does not always have to be related to your content. I have had students who for different reasons have found it difficult for them to participate in their studies, where coming to school is a big win for them. You'd be surprised how much simply turning something in can help bring them back into the fold. I promise you that there is value in that if you place it there. In general, like with, it's not with all teachers, but with some teachers, I guess, really just conforming to exactly how the state wants it to be run and not, you know, not really having a solid connection with students. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I think obviously a lot of the stuff that we get taught doesn't really ever, um, transmit to our real lives. But I guess that's not really the point. I mean, the point of school a lot is teaching us you know, how to meet deadlines, how to work you know, with people. And I think a lot of what we're taught in more of a broad sense is really helpful. Mm -hmm. But if you have four teachers trying to teach the same thing over and over for you know, 12 years of our lives, and you don't have a few teachers who 
kind of go against the grain and try their best to mix it up and try their best to, you know, kind of teach us something else. I guess it, there's no real, it doesn't help a lot. Like, there, there needs to be some sort of lesson outside of the content of the class that needs to be taught instead of just teaching, you know, the what the curriculum says. But some, teaching something more of an overarching broad thing that will actually help us.